come out of her, my people. All truth is not kind to hear. There's a bitter truth as well as a sweet truth. Come out of her, my people. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Israel. Let me know how I'm coming in. If I'm coming in pretty good, let me know. Hallelujah. We go ahead and move forward with the show. Um, with the radio broadcast here tonight. It's good to see each and every last one of you. I hope that you're all encouraged. And I hope that you've all had a blessed week. We have been extremely, extremely, extremely busy here at Straightway. We have been working our fingers to the bone. Literally, to the bone. Um, the brethren have been very, 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 very busy. Um, they're probably, all of them are probably going to enjoy this Sabbath uh, because of the amount of heavy lifting and work that we've done uh, this week. We thank the Most High Yah for giving each and every last one of you safe travels and safe journeys back to the home front, the destinations. Um, glad to see each and every last one of you on here tonight. Uh, the family is growing. Now, the family of Israelites, and I mean those who are faithful. Family of Israelites, though, are faithful. Hallelujah. Um, as you know, I'll be in Georgia uh, next week. As a matter of fact, it's coming up next week. Myself and Sister Carol will be in Georgia. And it uh, looks like our Brother Vernon and our Brother Jermaine is um, going to be... Uh, uh, there in Georgia as well, uh, which has a nice little long haul for them. But, you know, we're picking up a lot of family. Welcome, Brother Donnie and Sister Ajali, uh, the Saints of the Most High Yah that is down there in New Orleans area, uh, trying to keep things together and things are running uh, orderly and proficiently in a Hebrew Israelite manner. <clears throat> Be encouraged. Um, so I look forward uh, to seeing y'all. Hallelujah. Um, we moved about 7,000 pounds of quick creek and put it in the walls yesterday. Um, and then this morning we got up and picked up another 7,000 pounds of quick creek uh, that we're going to put in the walls again on the first day. Cause we want to make sure uh, that that tabernacle is, is uh, going to stand the test of time. Hallelujah. So if a high winds come through here and stuff, it's got to be some serious winds to break down one of those three sides. And that's just the truth. Because that tabernacle is going to be something else. Glory to the king. Um, we want to get it really, really strong. Because it's up high. Uh, that part of the tabernacle is 12 foot high. And um, and I, I'm not going to kid you. I'm feeling it in my body. Um, of course, when you work that hard, it starts to affect your mind. Um, and I know it starts to uh, make me um, not tolerate so much foolishness. I guess because I'm so fatigued and so tired of stuff and expect the stuff to be done. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I noticed that's one thing about me that when I end up getting tired, um, it's not that what I'm not saying is the truth. It's just that I can't put up with a bunch of foolishness whereas I'm, normally I'm, I'm a little bit more tolerable and stuff because I want to get things done. Um, I hope that everybody's enjoying uh, the teachings. We've kind of slowly... Uh, but surely entered in and went into uh, the teaching of spiritual warfare now. Don't get me wrong. I try my best to get back with everybody. Um, you have to understand. Uh, and I'm not exaggerating. Now, the increase in the ministry as far as people who are faithfully supporting the ministry, uh, that has increased. And we thank the Father for it. And, of course, if you ever come here to Straightway, you see exactly what I do uh, with the offerings. Um, as a matter of fact, I keep little if any uh, of what you're actually really coming in actually for myself um, um, you have to understand when people come this way especially when we move here straightway uh, we've all uh, without saying any words all we pretty much have given up our life mm -hmm. and this pretty much was over because for the cause of Christ and so you know we forego uh, what you call a lot of earthly so called pleasures uh, I don't know how you can have too much pleasure in this earth if, if you're everywhere you go and you're surrounded by heathens. Hallelujah. Um, but we've been very, very busy. 
Uh, it's been cold and it's been hot and it's been cold and it's been hot and it's been cold and it's been hot. And <clears throat> there's something lingering around in the air. Uh, just don't know what it is. And um, we have finally got the Hebrew Israelite church. Now, this is an old one that many of you ordered during God's. Uh, we finally got them in the other day. And Sister Carol. Hallelujah. Um, Sister Carol's going to, she's waiting for the boxes to come in. And we're probably going to get them shirts out to you. Hallelujah. Now, um, if you don't know, you need to know that if you work and you make any kind of money, you are commanded by the scripture to give tithes. Did you understand that? And offerings, tithes and offerings. Um, and most, you know, most Israelites don't do that. I don't know why, uh, because I tell you what, if, if you can find something out there better, um, then this ministry right here, let me know. Uh, so I can show y'all how to get behind it and follow it. But that's what you're supposed to do. Hallelujah. Um, it's just a commandment. It's a commandment. Uh, we don't have to talk about it because when you come out of those first day Helios Sun God churches, they probably done tied message y'all have to death. Now, um, I probably have given out maybe about 30, 30 CDs of Brother Rogers teaching on tides. And Brother Rogers did an excellent job on it. Um, Brother Roger baked out in Southern California. Um, and I, I tell you. I figured if anybody coming out in first day church, yeah, they'll know you wouldn't have to be told. You know, the tithing commandment is the same as keeping the commandments and all the rest of it because it is a commandment. As a matter of fact, especially during the feast days, too. You're not supposed to even come to the feast empty handed. And that's just the truth. But anyway, you know, those who, who obey and those who are blessed, you know, their life continue to keep getting better and better and better. Um, I'm going to be in Atlanta uh, November the 3rd, and I'd probably... Going to start the meeting at 11 to give people plenty of time uh, to get there because um, the way it looks like, looks like a lot of people are driving in um, all over the place. <clears throat> <clears throat> Somebody says, uh, where do we give them at? Well, where are you getting fed at? If you're getting fed over here, and if you're here every broadcast, you're listening to every service, you're, you're here, you should be giving tithe. That's the way it works. That's just the way it is. And, and that's just in the heart of believers. That's just all there is to it. Hallelujah. Um, if you're getting fed somewhere else, go over there. Don't listen to me over here. Hallelujah. That's just that simple. Go the way you've been fed. Anyway, don't let me get sidetracked off on tithe and offerings and all this other stuff. I've never... Uh, made that the thrust of the ministry, and I ain't planning on it. I figured that y'all's people are just obedient, and that's just the way it is. Um, hallelujah. All right. Um, I'm probably going to be there at 11. We're probably going to start at 11 o'clock, give people plenty of time. Uh, we got a pretty big room. It's going to seat about 100 people. Uh, I, I got... um. A few letters came in this week. I sent out some letters of thank you to many of you. Um, and I'm working on a letter. It's going to be a form letter, but I'm working on a letter to thank each and every last one of you who donate to the ministry by way of WePay. I also want you to know that if you have anybody calling you up from WePay or any other places and they're concerned about are you giving to this ministry, let me know. Let me know. All right. I, I like to know. I like to know who it is. Um, that's just the truth. Glory to the King. Uh, we're having a difficult time with our sound system up there. It's hard to get in some good practice. Uh, we don't know what it is. Uh, we'll, we'll figure it out one way or the other. Hallelujah. Hmm. All right. Um, let me go ahead and just go straight to the phone lines here. Because uh, I'm not planning on being as long as I was last um, week. Uh, we did have a good call in last week. We had a nurse call in, and and I hope that you was able to go to the YouTube if you missed it and listen to what she had to say uh, because she had a lot to say. Now, I did notice one thing about YouTube. seems like every time I turn around, they're looking to put limitations and restrictions on me. And what they've done now is they've restricted my upload of videos on YouTube to 20 minutes on um, the Pastor Dow channel. 
Uh, and the reason being is because they want me to give uh, a lot of personal information. Um, and they want me to verify with my cell phone number. You know, just like I said, it, it's all intrusive. And since I'm not doing that, um, they won't allow my videos for uploads of greater than 20 minutes, which the majority of YouTube videos, I don't even post more than 20 minutes. But what's ironic is, is on my brother Dial channel, I can upload a three-hour video if I wanted to. See, what's happening is, is when you get a channel like mine that has 10,000 subscribers, and, and you have a lot of exposure, that's when they start stepping up their restrictions upon you um, to try to force you into compliance. Well, it won't happen with me. I'll just go over and push the Brother Dial channel and start uploading more videos up there and hope that y'all would tell people about it. Now, we got um, a bunch of people in Florida whose eyes are opening up, and I'm hoping that y'all are doing pretty good down there with that hurricane that's supposed to be coming through Florida. I really do. Guest call-in number. It's 310-982-4226, Hallelujah. Looks like everything is going fine. Uh, all right. But yeah, I mean, anytime you're starting to get effective, you, what you need to do is use another browser. If you're seeing all black, you need a, you got all different types. You got Google, you got Firefox, you got Internet Explorer, uh, you got Chrome. You got all kinds of things you can pick from as far as browsers go. That's probably the problem is. All right. But anyway, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to tackle the phone calls here tonight because, see, this is one of the good ways that if you can't reach me during the week. And y'all can understand, um, this week I probably had, and I'm not exaggerating, I probably had between 55, 60 uh, different messages some way somehow sent to me where everybody wants me to uh, call them back now can you imagine me trying to work up in the tabernacle do the work that i have to do here um which and and then try to get some study in which i'm gonna have to actually make my life so i can feed you y'all's people i'm actually gonna have to turn around my life to the point to where i'm spending 60 percent of that time um, in prayer and in study and not so much as doing other things um, and that's just the truth uh, because it's more important to get the word out to the people um, and the most high is moving some, some faithful brother here brother Darrell has moved here uh, from California and brother Darrell uh, has worked in construction pretty much all his life and Brother Darrell gets it. He got it. Brother Darrell is a worker. He can get it done, and you know the job is going to be done right, which the, I appreciate stuff like that because what that does is that has my confidence level to soar, knowing that I can look at this brother and give him something to do and watch how he does it, know it's going to be done with the utmost care. Um, and not only that, he was able to provide wisdom thus far on the building that we're building on now. So Brother Darrell has already moved into town, and he's been here working with us here straightway almost every single day. Uh, and he has just had been a, an immediate asset to the community. Can you imagine driving all the way from California and he's going to spend the last three, four days just really getting after it with us. And I mean, we've been getting after it here. Uh, Brother Darrell's been a great asset. Now, when people like Brother Darrell comes, that way I know that Elder Doug would have um, a, a man also that he could trust in because Elder Doug pretty much runs the land. And 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 it's good for my confidence to know that Elder Doug is going to have somebody there with him that knows what they're doing, not just a hand, but he can say, "Brother, can you do this? Uh, brother, can you do that?" And he know how to get done because the brother knows what he's doing. Um, we have enough people that you tell them everything to do step by step. We need minds as well as hands-on action. Um, and and when that happens, that means I can pull back a little bit more from the work, but I'm still going to have my hand in it um, because um, that's just the way it is until we get certain buildings up. And then I can come up and check it out and knowing it's going to be done right. And I'm sure Elder Doug appreciated it as well. Hallelujah. So we've got a lot of faithful brother moving in. And Brother Juan, Brother Juan Geary, um, has moved in with his family, um, Sister Rainey and the two boys. And, and, and um, you know, I've been waiting forever to try to get somebody to fix a couple of vending machines on heating and cooling. Well, Brother Juan is a professional out there in that world. 
He, he's been working in refrigeration and heating and cooling forever. And Brother Juan came here and just immediately went and bought the parts and fixed a couple of vending machines just like that. And when I get opportunity, I'm going to have him go ahead and fix the rest of them. We're going to see what we can do to salvage them and see if we can get them out of some of these businesses and bring in some more Federal Reserve notes and ironclad slugs um, so we can buy more food for all the people that's coming here to Straightway and visiting. Hallelujah. And so, you know, I'm glad that skilled brothers and skilled sisters are coming in sister rainy um now our sound system does not do any justice of what you people are hearing over the internet compared to what we hear in the tabernacle and we're working on that uh we we got a couple of difficult things that we're trying to figure out and it's a hard learning curve it just really truly is um but we um we're gonna get it done we're gonna get it i promise we're gonna get it so y'all can hear what we're hearing there in the tabernacle um Elder Doug really works hard, and I tell you, it's just pretty complex. It's like learning a whole new language, learning sound. I mean, it's unbelievable uh, what it takes to learn sound. Anyway, we're going to go to New Jersey, and uh, we, we're going to holler at our brother Ron. All right, brother Ron. And, and Carol, tell them don't be calling during broadcast. All right, we're going to talk to brother Ron. All right, Brother Ron, this is Pastor Dow, man. You're on the Straight With Tooth Radio broadcast. I may help you. Shabbat shalom, Pastor. How are you doing? Um, brother Ron, I'm doing all right, man. You know how it is. Uh, uh, we thank the Father for every time the Sabbath comes because we've been working so hard all week, brother, that we just thank y'all for the Sabbath. Yeah, I hear you, brother. I hear you. Shabbat shalom to all the brothers and sisters out there that's scattered in the, uh, in the diaspora. Uh, continue believing in Yah, continue in the way. I'm not going to, you know, really hold you that long or anything. I just wanted to call in and check in with the saints and uh, speak to them all, of course. And, um, you know, pray uh, pray to keep you in strength, Pastor. Pray to keep you strong. Uh, the way that everything's going looks like all the saints down there going to have to build in dumb before I could even get down there and give you a hand. I mean, you got the walls up, the concrete laid down on the floor. There's not really, you know, much to do. You just got to out and everything. Uh, brother, we 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 really working hard. We were really working hard to get it done. I had a couple of um, uh, people to the community come and give us a hand in laying those blocks. And and y'all been saying the brothers really been working hard, man. We've been working a long, long time, um, but we getting it done, brother. We've been we got more rebar um, and more concrete we have to put in the wall. So I know the walls in the cell, brother, is going to have at least fifteen thousand pounds of, of if not sixteen thousand pounds of concrete just in the walls in itself. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely not going nowhere, no matter what type of woman hits that. I'm uh, bracing up here in New Jersey, too. They said that we're supposed to get uh, some pretty tough ones from the hurricane. I mean, I don't even see coming up uh, until I went to the store uh, earlier today before Sabbath just to get a couple of things. And yeah, we're supposed to be getting hit with the hurricane, too. So we'll see how it goes. But, uh, you know, when I see things like that, I, I kind of... I kind of rejoice about it because it's the power of the Most High Yah. You get to see his power firsthand. And, you know, a lot of people are fearful when they hear hurricanes and tornadoes and, and everything. Yet, I think it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful. You can actually see the power and the might of your Most High. And, and you know, because you read the scriptures and you see his power in the scriptures. And then when, when he does act, you see the power firsthand. So that is beautiful. Hallelujah. Brother Ron, it is always good to hear your voice, my brother. Yours too. Yours too. And your saints also. Um, continue to fight the good. And uh, continue continue to add to the kingdom of the Most High Yah. Hallelujah. And praise be to Yah. All right, my brother. You be encouraged. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. I got a text message today. Uh, from Brother Jesus. And Brother Jesus is probably doesn't flew out to California because uh, his mother's got a blood clot in the brain. I sent him a text message to tell him what to do. I haven't heard anything back from him yet. So y'all keep Brother Jesus um, in your prayers because his wife, I mean his wife, his mother, somewhere along my age, or maybe a little bit older, um, not too much more. Um, and so we need to keep Brother Jesus because we know how um, death can affect if you know, and, and all these scares that come. Brother Ace is a good brother. I told him what to do and maybe he'll do it. 
And uh, maybe he's got the message, and then we'll see what the Most High has to say from that. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Let's go to Brother Jerry in Florida down there with a hurricane. So, Brother Jerry, uh, tell us, um, 786, what's going on down there with that hurricane, man? Uh, Y'all faring pretty well down there? Yes, sir, Pastor. How you doing, Pastor? Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. How y'all doing? That's pretty good. Appreciate it. That's pretty good. Um, Derek, how's it going down there, Pastor? Uh, it's going pretty good. I've been watching and keeping up on YouTube. Yes, sir, I have. I've tried to post those videos on YouTube so y'all can um, see what we're doing here straightway so that y'all can be informed of what the happenings are and what we're doing. Yes, sir. Um, we um, we all been paying attention to the YouTube. We over here, we're, um, I have power. Um, we have brother um, Eric. Brother Emmanuel, Brother Dustin, Sister Larielle, we all here gathered up. We cooked some good food before Shabbat. Now we're just enjoying it. We're listening to you, you know. Yep. Um, I just wanted to give a quick testimony and let you know that um, I've been offered two job interviews starting Monday. And um, I, I pray and I thank the Most High Yah for that. And um, there shouldn't be no excuses to, to me sending my ties in. So... I'm gonna dedicate my my uh, uh, most of my paycheck to that because I, I do believe that if you believe in Christ, you have to give your tithes in mm. as a believer because faith without work is also dead. So I want to keep the faith alive and do whatever I can do to help my family. Well, Hallelujah! Um, make sure you're able to provide a good living there. Okay. Yes, sir. And um, the the saints over here they wanted to say Shabbat Shalom to you. So give me one second. Yeah, let's hear from you. Doing pretty good, brother Eric. How are you, my brother? Well, I'm excited about life. We're all here having fun, enjoying, enjoying this fellowship together, realizing that every time Israel gets together, man, we just feel stronger and that much more stronger. So we're excited. Over here enjoying some time fellowship as well as enjoying you speak uh, to the world. Hey, um, how's the hurricane doing down there um, in that area, Brother Eric? Are y'all being affected by it? Well, you know, I, 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 we're sending a lot of rains. I really don't follow it as much. I should, but uh, I'm just, you know, I'm actually just doing life in y'all, whatever comes, comes. But um, a little bit of rain here and there, but nothing really to be concerned about as far as I know. Huh. Huh. No, everything is going pretty good. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm getting a lot of people... Um, contacting me in that Florida area. You probably need to move away from that computer, Eric. We're getting a lot of feedback and side tone. Yeah, I know. I know we're definitely working on trying to get, uh, we've been collaborating. Everybody's been trying to brainstorm here in Florida, making sure that uh, we do something to prepare to get out, you know, to get up out of here. Um, most of us are looking forward to getting up to, to, to Tennessee, hanging out like a lot of the brothers and sisters are doing by fellowshipping and gathering over there in town or what have you. So, Looking forward to that. I had the privilege of meeting a brother, J.C., up in the Tampa area. He's fellowshipping a lot with the, with the young ladies out there, with all the sisters out there in Tampa. So I had an opportunity to fellowship with him uh, today on the phone, which was great. I, I'm, I'm excited to see Israel's, you know, Israel's waking up. I'm fired up. All right, brother. Um, well, I got a, I got a line of brothers right here wanting to say hi. Hold on a second, brother. Emmanuel. Pastor? Hey, brother Emmanuel, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. How's your mom? How is she? She's okay, but um, you know, I, I sent her that. I sent her an email about the uh, birthday, that birthday thing. Yeah. That, you know the newsletters. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. So you know, she she looks she looks at the uh, the picture with the family. And she looks at the straight way, the GOTS 2012, and she looks at the knife, you know? Yeah. And she was asking me about it, and it's like, well, yeah, you know, it's like, oh, she, she's thinking like it's a, some kind of idol or something. 
Well, I don't think it's an idol. I mean, uh, Jesus carried a sword. The apostles carried a sword. Uh, a knife is is, a, is a, a good tool that you need for cutting. Um, you know, when you to cut yeah, down branches. That's what I thought too. You know, cutting that's, garments. That's I looked. I didn't. I didn't look at it much as a. You know, like a. <laughs> hey, let's bow down before this sword. She she also, you know, she also asked me about why why you have the sword like by the thing by your altar. You know, you know, like your desk. Hey, all you have to do is tell her, read the Bible, then she can give me the answer. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you do that. Yeah. Tell her, read the Bible. Yes. I, that's how I figured as much. <laughs> all right, man. All right. That's pretty good. Hey, here comes, here comes Dustin. Hey, thanks. <clears throat> Shabbat Shalom. Hey, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. How you doing, uh, Dustin? Pretty good. How you been, my pastor? I miss doing, you guys. Doing all right. Doing all right. What you got, man? Down here fellowshipping with the Saints. Getting it done with Brother Eric. Taking care of business. Can't wait to get up to Tennessee. I'll be in uh, in Georgia next weekend, turning 30 years old with your pastor. Yeah, boy, man. You getting old, ain't you? A little bit. Feel stronger every day, though. All right, man. It's good to hear from y'all. You're hearing from me too. My daughter says hello and, and she loves y'all. She can't wait to get back up there as well. All right, brother Dustin. Hi, brother. Here's Sister Lariel. Hello, Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Hey, Shabbat Shalom, sister. You may have another couple of sisters down there at the fellowship and you won't be the only sister down there for a while, huh? Yeah, I'm the only sister, but it's okay. As long as we getting together and fellowshipping, I'm okay with that. I'm just excited about being in this space, and I'm, I'm ready to grow more and learn more about it. All right, sister. Good hearing your voice. Okay, you too. See you later, Pastor. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> They're excited in Florida, ain't they? Shabbat shalom, Pastor. Shabbat shalom. Y'all be encouraged. Yes, sir. Glory to the king. All right. Yeah. Boy, they doing good in Florida. I tell you what, I got to know it. Let's go to Johannesburg, South Africa. Johannesburg, South Africa. You on the line. How may I help you? Well, Johannesburg, South Africa is on, but shalom. shalom. Hi, am I on? Yeah, you are on. Oh, this is Brother David from Canada. Huh? Oh, man, how in the world is Brother, Brother Shane, how you? Brother, I don't know what's going on, man. I, that's two times in a row, this, once last week, once this week. Brother David, how you doing in Canada, man? I'm doing good up here, Pastor. I really enjoyed your, uh, your sermon on Tuesday. It really helped. I know it was the other day. I uh, finally could put a name to the voice of uh, who was talking in my head. After it, and I really appreciate it. Right. Well, I'm hoping that it's done a good job of helping you out, brother. Yes, sir, it has. Uh, are you speaking on that tomorrow, tomorrow too? Well, I'm going to be uh, kind of moving on a little bit, but we're still going to keep in the spiritual warfare vein. I'm sorry, Pastor, you broke up. Yeah, we're still going to keep in the spiritual warfare vein. We do have a bad connection, though. All right. Can you hear me, though? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep. All right. I just have a question for you, Pastor. Um, Go ahead. starting to get a couple people up here who are uh, coming uh, around the, the line of the... How am I trying to say this? They're coming to Yah, and I want to know, because you referred uh, before that there's a right way to pray for someone when they're coming into the way. Yeah. I want to know if you could share that with me. Well, the big thing is to make sure that they meet the conditions of the scripture, that they repent, they keep the commandments, and we'll start with that first. Make sure they stay away from fornication. Make sure they don't uh, eat things strangled to blood and, and worshiping idols. Um, if they do that, brother, they'll fare well, and then just have them to keep listening, keep listening, keep listening, keep listening. All right, I caught most of that, but it, it, I'm just looking for things that I can do, so there's no right way to pray for them 
Well, sure, man. I mean, you're, you have the spirit. Just You'll be led by the Holy Spirit, brother. I'm not there. You have more light for them than I do. So I'll just let the Holy Spirit lead you. All right, sir. All right, brother Dave. Shalom. Thank you, brother. Shabbat shalom. All right, that's brother Dave. Hallelujah in Canada. We're going to go to the watchman in North Carolina, brother Anton. Call number 828. Watchman. Come on, watchman. What you got? Shabbat shalom, Pastor, and Shabbat shalom, Saints. Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom. How you doing? Uh, doing well, Pastor, doing well. What you got? I just want to, I know you've been very busy, you all have, uh, regarding the uh, building project. But you um, posted a question on one of your videos regarding Alex Jones. Yeah. I sent you a text message on your phone. I sent you a link on First Speak that I did find something where he was speaking about it. Yeah, I did watch that video. Yeah, I did watch that video, but he didn't go into great detail or or even enough. Right. You know, what I mean, he just kind of like vaguely hit on it. Then he was in, he was out. Yeah, and that's the only thing I could find. But I figured I'd send that to you so you, you know. Yeah, I appreciate in response it. to your question. I do appreciate it. I, I mean, I know what he said. He says that he doesn't really talk about religion and stuff. But I mean, you have to understand if you're going to talk about Catholic people and they're pedophiles and, and you're going to talk about politics. Politics in itself is a religion. It's just that people don't call it that. Yes, sir. Um, you know, I think that what we what they're doing is they're selectively picking. You know, you do have some people that are, they're very scared to put their hand on this, this wicked satanic Zionist state called Israel. Yeah, yeah they'll catch me at the beginning, when he began to answer that question, he played with words and said, Zion honest. Yeah. Uh, I'm going I'm to look at yeah, that. I, I like, yeah, I'm going to like, look at wait, that. Man. Yeah, I said, I'm going to look at that again. Yeah I, yeah, I caught that when he did that. I was like, uh-huh. That's why they tells me that he's for. He's not against. No. Uh, I don't know, man. Um, I, I don't get nothing good out of that state. Nothing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't need the best. Oh, uh, another thing I hear, Pat. Just one more thing. This is for all the saints and for the inks. Uh, and I spoke on this on one of my broadcasts regarding this tradition of man, Halloween. Yeah. But something I observed today has floored me. It's what we call downtown Lenore. They had the streets blocked off. And on a rough count, I would probably say there were about 2,000 people walking around the streets to all the businesses on the coming Sabbath. So instead of preparing their households, they are collecting candy. It, it's, it's still sickening. Man. And that two thousand people in that little bitty small town. Oh, oh yeah, it's I mean it's a medium size, medium oh. small. Okay. But it's, I mean that was just a rough count. I'm just going by tens, you know, ten, twenty, thirty, forty. I would say it was close to about two thousand people. Man, I tell you what, brother, you tell me we're not a pagan nation. I'm, I'm telling you, it was. I did a video on it. Actually, since I closed my YouTube account, um, Brother Jermaine, I know you're listening, so I'm going to tell on your, wait, because I know you have YouTube, and I'm going to send you an email or something to communicate with you later regarding this video I did. But that's all I have, Pastor. I just wanted to share that with you in all things. All right, Watchman. Be encouraged, brother. Man, yeah, I've been busy, man. I, I ain't even had time to hardly even do anything, brother. And I've been so tired when I get in uh, after working, brother, so much. But yeah, anyway, you know how it is. You ain't no stranger to work. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, well, take care. Get some rest, Pastor. All right. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Glory to the king. All right. Yeah, we, we, uh, 
you a little bit busy up there. Huh. Let me see the watchman. See, I'd let you know I ain't been watching. Watchman just said he closed his YouTube account. Let me um uh, I wanna go over here and check check something here real quick. Uh Man, I thought I had the Watchman channel up here. Man, I ain't even got the Watchman channel up here. Huh. Man, I tell you, I got so much going on. I halfway don't even know if I'm coming or going nowadays. Huh. All right. Hey, Junior, we're going to go to New York. Junior, what you got, Junior? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom, Junior. Yeah, I can't post it up here, too, but I heard it's going to be like a nice little company of Western East going to merge and get into with a storm. Uh huh. It's going to be like a superstorm, like a make like a Northeaster. That's how it's going to be, I think. It's going to be like cat, like cat one or strong tropical storm. Right. I mean, what what are they saying it's supposed to hit at? Do you know? Probably like heavy rain, wind, you know, stuff like that. Like St. Mark for how winds. 70. Yeah. So that last year, like Irene. Like last year. Like Irene hit up there too. Remember that? That's, that's pretty hard. That's pretty, that's pretty some, that's some high winds, brother. When is they anticipate it's supposed to hit? Supposed to hit like, like Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, like Monday. Like Monday, around that area, around Monday, I think. Well, okay, brother. I'll tell you what. You make sure that uh, I can't hear you because it's breaking up. Man, I hate this breaking up stuff. You know, I may have to cut this video feed. I may have to just um, go strictly to audio so I can hear y'all. Um, brother Jermaine, I'm going to cut the video feed tonight um, just to see how we do um, on the um, the audio half. So, Brother Jermaine, I want you to go ahead and, and, and make sure you pick up on the audio uh, feed if you're Hallelujah. All right, give me a second here, Junior. Okay, I can wait. I can wait. Take your time. Take your time. I cut the video feed, so let me know. How am I coming in now, Junior? You're coming good now. I can hear you. Excuse me? Can't hear you. Breaking up again. I don't understand it now, then. I'm going to have to start the video feed back up. But that's all right, Brother Junior. Hey, bless you, brother. Shabbat shalom. So, I love you so much. God bless you, Israel. Junior. All right. Hallelujah. Brother Junior, good brother. Real good brother. I shouldn't be breaking up no more because the, the video feed takes up a lot of bandwidth. However, I do need to know if I am still breaking up and you can hear me, can't make sense out of what I'm saying. All right? All right, we're going to go to Florida. Uh, call the number 954, and then we're going to go to Iowa and talk with Brother Caprice. So we're going to go to Florida first, then we're going to Iowa. Florida 954 is Pastor Dow. You're on the Straightway Truth. How may I help you? Shalom, Pastor. It's Jerry from uh, Jupiter, Florida. Hey, brother. How you doing, Brother Jerry? Good, good Pastor. I'm just... Uh, just enjoying the broadcast. I uh, I enjoyed the videos uh, this week, but I just had one question um, that you talked about um, in the video about uh, Revelation about that everybody will be called. How I'm still new to this and I'm learning. It was interesting um, how you were talking about, and I just I don't know if you just uh, clarify because I did read it, but about how every man, rich, poor, great, will be called to receive the mark. Right. Right, so it, basically that'll be something that'll be, in other words, that'll be something that everybody will will either have to be either they'll be given they're going to be given an opportunity to say yes or no, correct? Basically. Well, yeah, but you have to understand that the majority of the world is going to follow it. Now, us Israelites that are filled with ruah and keep the commandments, we ain't going to take it. And besides oh, that, yeah, you know, as long as we 
Uh, got place mm-hmm. for us to fly off into the wilderness. So that's why we stay mm-hmm. obedient. Yeah. Uh, no, no, it was just interesting because I, you were talking. I mean, there was some good. That was a good video. I mean, uh, about those people going over there and, and the dealing with, and it was, uh, and it, you know, it, it's just amazing with the technology I've gotten now and everything RFID. And when I, you know, started doing more research into it, I found out about. Uh, uh, I, I, again, I don't know if that's going to be the mark, but I see a bunch of police officers, firefighters, have been getting those RFID chips since 2007. Uh, so it's it's pretty interesting if that will be it, but again we don't know. I don't know if it'll it'll be, but it was uh, pretty interesting. Huh. Yeah, I know. Yeah, if you punch in the videos, uh, you, you can find back from 2007 a firefighter. Uh, they showed a sheriff's officer. Uh, they were talking about military soldiers. Some of these videos were from I'm going to say 2007 to 2010, uh, even up to the day about how the RFID uh, chip, the viral chip and stuff, uh, about the technology. So it was, it, was, you know, it was pretty interesting about the information that, you know, is going out there. CNN had a thing about uh, business owners wanting their employees to be chipped uh, to work. You can find a few of those uh, of that on CNN. So like you said, Pastor, uh, you know, they're, they're going to lie to us. They're not going to tell us what their intent is, but, uh, I ain't taking no chip regardless. <laughs> so it's uh, it was just interesting how far it's it's how how laid back that that RFID chip is been around, but people think it's it's, it's going to come out now. Like uh, at least I did. I thought it was going to come out now because of the um, Obamacare. But I know this RFID chip, viral chip, whatever they want to call it, has been out for a few years and, and been implanted on uh on a, quite a few people. Oh, yeah, you're right, bro, Jerry, but. Like I said, man, you know, you know, you know how they do, bro. They want to make a call yeah. for people to receive. And the majority of Americans, because they will not obey, will not keep the commandments, they will not make moves, brother. They're gonna, hey, they're gonna be ready. They're gonna receive that thing, line and sinker. Yeah, I, I, I agree, Pastor. That's why, like, uh, when you said about uh, about you know the possessions here, the stuff here. You, and you were talking about before you gotta you gotta you, everything we got is just wait you know I'm trying to uh, I don't got much but I'm trying to get rid of the junk I got because like you said it's, it's too much anyways but it's too you said everybody wants you, you can't live both lives you can't live this one in Israel like you gotta get rid of that garbage and just be be ready to you know give it off to y'all. So, so all right, Pastor. I know you're busy. You gotta you gotta think. But shalom. I love you, Pastor. Miss you. Can't wait to uh, see you again, Pastor. All right. So long. So long. So long, Pastor. Oh, boy. All right. We're going to our Brother Caprice. Caller number 515. Brother Caprice. Come on, brother. How you doing? I'm doing good, Pastor. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. Uh, and I wanted to uh, say uh, Shabbat Shalom to all the saints. And uh, me and my family, we miss you. I just want to touch on uh, uh, two two points: one worldly and one spiritually. Um, I wanted to be a witness for you because uh, remember when you know what you you were prophesizing before about the layoffs, and I told you what happened with us here. Well, yeah. this week, this week, for you people out there, I just want you to understand what uh, the pastor's saying is real because the devil is always working. Now, for y'all don't know, my wife's a mayor here in the town, so this ain't no conspiracy or nothing. So if anything happens, we know what happens before everybody else. Well, on Monday, it was 73 degrees, and the whole town lost power. Wow. So so I'm sitting on my deck. Now, we prepared. We got supplies and everything. And I, as I'm looking, the Holy Spirit is talking to me and saying, look, I could count. Two houses had candles, Pastor. Are you serious? Two houses. You had the whole town walking the street in the dark. I was offering people flashlights. I said, just bring them back when the lights come back on. Nobody had nothing. Nothing. Wow. Um, so I, cut, I, started cutting, I started cutting our candles because I said, I don't want them to know I got too much stuff over here. <laughs> Man. Two houses. And you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. That's how dark it was. Wow. So that was, uh, I think, Monday or Tuesday. The power went out. Yesterday, 
the town's water, we only had two, two feet of water left in the well. So we are burning. We uh we got to we got to boil the water here, because we ran out of water in the whole town. So we have water. So we had to hand out water to other people. These people don't even have water. Hey, brother. So what, so what you're saying is it's already coming to pass in my life. In my life, I'm seeing it already. Hey, so I just want to be a witness for you. Hey, uh, brother Capri, did, did you and your wife store water in the house like I asked y'all to? Oh yeah, we have plenty of water. We is have it, plenty of water. Uh, it, we got we got we got we got pallets and pallets of water stored in the house. Plus we um like I said, my wife's the mayor, so she told me so I for precautionary measures I filled up the tubs and stuff just in case, you know, we needed to use the water. But we never had to even use it. But we still boiling water. We'll still be boiling water in this town till probably next week. Next my, Shabbat. My. But but y'all Y'all Israelites are prepared. Oh yeah, oh yeah, well prepared. But this, but 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 it just showed me that I need to really tighten up. You know, I got generators, but the generator ain't hooked up. I got solar panels, they ain't hooked up. So I just need to tighten up a little bit. What I need to do. But I just wanted to be a witness for you, for anybody out there who hear your uh, messages on YouTube and everywhere else and don't believe what you're saying. Now, my town is a town of 170 people. And so we're not a big town, I mean, but if it can happen here in some little town, I know it can happen in Chicago. I know it can happen in New York and Los Angeles. But, you know, we made it through the local um, supermarkets. They uh, gave water for us and everything. So, I mean, the people was fine. We got mostly old people. So we had to deliver a lot of water to old people and make sure they was all right. But it's just interesting. Brother, does it not do your heart good knowing that you are prepared and you are prepared just in case something does happen? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, when I saw them people with just, just two houses with candles, I My. said, man, when Pastor Dow says, can you trust the neighbor to the left? Can you trust the neighbor to your right? I knew. I said, no. I had everybody start blowing them candles out. I said, these people better get prepared. I told my wife, I said, I'm going to have to do some classes or something and get these people prepared because ain't no way, ain't no way we going to make it if something happened with these people. They're going to be killing each other. You got that right. They're going to literally be killing each other. Boy. Man, you know, Brother Caprice, I'm glad, I'm glad you and your wife are Israelites, man. I'm glad that y'all have ears to hear. I'm glad that you were ready uh, whenever um, things went awry like that. And they replenish the stock once the power and the water and everything comes back on. Oh, I did that today. As soon as I got off work, I just filled up the whole car full of water and more food. And but you know, I, we 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 we're fine. It's just it's just so interesting. My wife, she's at a meeting now with the the, the community, and she said, you know, I'm so glad you found. Pass it down. I'm so glad. I said, yeah. I said, the most high let us there because I didn't know nothing about this stuff, nothing, until last year, March. That's when I started preparing people, and I've been going full bore. I'm one of those people who are competitive, and if I know that I'm behind in something, I go at it with everything. Uh, so another thing I want to talk to you about is the, uh, what you said about um, the, the uh, Bible being a love story. When I went to Gotts, I, ne- I never said nothing, but I was embarrassed of myself because there were so many other strong brothers in the Bible, so it embarrassed me. So I knew I had, when I got back home, that I needed to start studying and studying and studying and studying, and that's what I've been doing. I've been hitting it hard. And when you say, and I'm just in numbers now. I've been going since Gotts, I'm all the way through numbers. And you're right. It is a love story. Mm-hmm. He gave us, I mean, to the detail of everything we were supposed to do. This tribe go here. This is how the money is done. We were totally supposed to be separ- separated away from these people. And uh, I've been reading Samuel, and I wanted to know, um, I don't know if you can touch on this maybe one day in a uh, you know, Bible study or something, but Sam, 1 Samuel chapter 8, when uh, 
we lost our way as Israel when we wanted a king. Yeah. When we wanted a king, and the Most High, Yah, told Samuel, to tell, he gave Samuel the consequences for Israel if we took a king. Yeah. All the curses, what he's going to do to our children. Yep. Everything, and we still like in uh, like an accident, a stiff necked people didn't listen, didn't listen, and I couldn't believe it. You know, I was saying to my wife, I, said, I can't believe these people seen y'all come down, he talked to them, and they still won't listen. They still wouldn't listen. Well, I, I said, everybody on the world must be really wicked if he has some, that much patience to deal with Israel. Everybody had to be some really wicked people. Boy, you see the reason why I preach and teach the way I do, Brother Caprice? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, but I got it now, Pastor. Like I'm you said, hook, line, and singer, I'm all in. I'm all in because this is the truth. And I, and I, I read this to my kids, and because and my daughter, she don't under, she, she's seven. She's trying to understand. But I, but I read it to her, and I said, see why you got to listen. You know, and like you were saying about soldiers, me being a former soldier, my 13-year-old son, I always tell him, pay attention to detail because it may save your life. Because I was a combat engineer in the Army, and I dealt with landmines and explosives. So I always had to be attention to detail because I may kill myself or blow somebody up. Mm. So I try to get my son to stay focused like that because he, he's a scatterbrain sometimes. So I try to focus him up. But you know how it is when you've got young boys. Yeah, that's all, that's all I had to say, Pastor. I just wanted to be a witness to you and let you know. Keep doing what you're doing. You're in our prayers, and the saints are in our prayers. But you got to get this message out for people to be um, self sufficient. Because, like I tell you, people, just 170 people, and I can count on one hand how many people had, you know, candles, just candles, not even, you know, just candles. That... You know, people walking around like a bunch of zombies in the dark because they couldn't stay in the house because it's, you know, they had no lights. So it was, it was real, it was real sad. Unbelievable. But I love you all. Thank you. And uh, I look forward to uh, listening to the sermon tomorrow, Pastor. Shabbat Shalom. Hey, uh, Brother Caprice, ain't you glad, yes, ain't you glad that you came, that you and your wife came to the first two got? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. We, I mean, the people who don't understand, it, it it's, it's under uh, what, what you charge, and Pastor. I, I, I get on here and I see classes for three, four, five hundred dollars. People charging for the same type of thing. So for that little amount of money you charging is not even doing just, especially the feeding part. You know, feeding all them people. So you know, you should you you losing money. You need to you need to up that. You know, you need to up that because you know uh, we're at the point now. We we probably not gonna. Uh, Attend no more gods. We're gonna probably start now going to all the feasts, um, coming to the feast. And right. um, but um, other people that don't have any clue, they better figure out something because, you know, um, if you got a family, and if you can't even give them a, if you don't even have candles, but you got an Xbox, you got a DVD player, you got silly games and all this other stuff for them kids to try to buy their love, that ain't gonna help you. That ain't, and you ain't got no gun to protect yourself. I'm sitting on the deck. I got the gun on my hip, got the flashlight in my hand, and I'm watching all the people because I don't trust nobody. So yeah. you better prepare, people. Shabbat shalom, Pastor. I love you. Hey, love you, brother. Give your wife, your children, hugs for me, brother, and, and appreciate you calling in, brother. Caprice, good hearing your voice. Shabbat, yep. Shabbat shalom, Pastor. Man, I tell you what, that is utterly ridiculous for a town to be in that kind of shape. Unbelievable. Literally unbelievable. Can you believe that? He said he could count out of almost 200 people on one hand, those who were prepared. And because they heard this voice, they were able to not only have food, but they had water, they had shelter, they had candles, they had... He said, yeah, he was giving out flashlights. Man, I tell you what, hey, Israel, I hope you... Hey, I'm not kidding what I'm telling y'all. Y'all better make moves and start getting out of these cities. I'm not... I am not playing games with that. 
you gonna really I mean you don't want to be you don't even want to be called dead in the cities when civil unrest comes. I promise you, it's gonna be ugly on an unprecedented scale. No, online church is not working because I, I want people to hear me because we was cutting off, losing the feed too much, and coming in and out. How are y'all are able to hear me now? Can y'all hear me pretty good without um, any break-offs or cut-offs and all like that right now? But, man, I tell you what, Brother Caprice, man, what, what an honor it was for him to actually call in. He's right about that. Uh, next year, got. It's going to be more than $30. As a matter of fact, it's going to be up there on the scale because he is right. Um, we don't call it losing money when we're giving out a lot of knowledge and stuff because, you know, our hearts are just that big. But if you look at it from a logistic standpoint, we 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 don't do these meetings because we're gaining money. We actually, we do. We lose money, thousands and thousands of dollars. Pastor Fox contributed greatly um, to God's, I mean greatly. Uh, with his contributions was was half of the expense of God's, and I mean he dug deep in his pockets, and we bless Pastor Fox and his lovely wife Sister Kate for coming and being instrumental. It was after all Pastor Fox and I was brainstorming. He the one who came up with the idea, um, and and I tell you what, it, it's amazing. Listen to me, people. I don't want you to be destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Now you may not like my delivery. You may not like the way that I talk. You may not like the how I present things. Hey, I had a problem with it when I first started preaching myself. Instead of just worrying about feelings and emotions and stuff, I need for you to become proactive. Go and check out what I'm saying. See if it is so. Rather than getting offended and rather than jumping to conclusions, because I'm saying stuff that you have never heard and saying things you're not familiar with. You know, Brother Caprice and his lovely wife, I guarantee you they were glad the day they came across my channel and they were able to prepare for such a time as this. And I'm hoping that each and every last one of y'all are preparing and getting your hearts ready um, because I'm telling you, these are just small little skirmishes and preludes of things to come. And that's just the truth. Um, it's bad and it's going to get worse. We're going from bad to worse, and it ain't going to get any better. And I hope that y'all are really, truly becoming proactive. I hope that y'all are, are, are taking heed. I hope that y'all are storing water. Remember I told y'all, I did say 20 gallons, and then I upped it to 40. Every home needs to have at least 40 gallons of water in it. I did say 20. It needs 40. Every home. Needs to have 40 gallons. Why well, he even had enough presence of awareness to even fill up a tub because water's going to be so scarce. Well, you know, when people hear a wise man, they'll be delivered, but the fools, they'll pass right on by. That's what they'll do. They will literally pass right on by and be destroyed. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Brother Steve, how you coming along with my little chart that was you able to get up with it? Yeah, 40 gallons is not anything for a whole family. You're right, Brother Ugly. When you take a look and you look at how contaminated our skies are with these wicked chemtrails, and you look and see how they have polluted the food and all but feeding us anything, I mean, everything but poison, uh, and they're giving us that too nowadays in the food, where the food is suffering nutritionally, uh, it's just a sad, 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 sad thing. It really truly is. Hallelujah. Let's go to New York. New York, calling number 917. 917, this is Pastor Dow. You're going to straight with you, girl. You're broadcast. I may help you. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dow, and Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom, my sister. How are you? I'm very blessed. Um, I'm actually very happy that I was able to get through. I didn't know how the calling system works. But um, I recently have come into truth. And uh -huh. by recently, I mean um, as October 21st. Wow. Uh, right. <laughs> um, but just I, I'm trying to wrap this up in, like, you know, a nice picture for for everybody that's listening. But um, I've I've been a Sabbath keeper for about nine months, so I'm not new to that. Um, I, I eat clean foods, you know, and, and pretty much – 
commandment observer. That's that's what I do. But um, now I'm at the point where uh, I'm trying to figure out where to go now. I I live with my family who still go to Sunday church and, you know, still do everything that Christians do. And although they try to understand what I'm doing, it's still a little bit of a challenge for me to, you know, explain to them why I'm doing this, this, and that. But um, it's I'm just trying to figure out what steps should I take now in terms of living in this house because I'm, like I said, I'm single and I'm young, living in this house, and just trying to figure out where I'm supposed to go from here. Well, um, what, I, what's your name? I'm sorry? What's your name? Oh, I'm Damaris, Sister Damaris, sorry. How do you spell that? D-A-M-A-R-I-S. Ah, good hearing from you, Sister Damaris. Now, I'll tell you what you need to do. First step number one is, is don't rush and don't be hasty. The first thing you need to do is you need to make sure you're at every single Shabbat service online, online church that we're broadcasting so you can grow in grace and knowledge. Watch the YouTube videos. uh, Go on the Straightway Truth website, straightwaytruth.com, and get informed, get educated uh, in the Bible what you need, sis, is a strong base. You need to spend time in the Word. And the biggest warning I could give you is, is don't go eating off other tables because it's going to bring about a spirit of confusion. Get rooted and get grounded in the truth um, and grow in that so you'll know how to be able to answer because it still could be a chance, as long as you're under that roof right now, that, that your parents could be saved. Okay. Uh I definitely agree with you on that. Uh, I've, I've, as short of a time as I've been revealed the truth, I've been taking in so much. Like my brain, I feel like a kid again. My brain is a sponge. Like I've just been soaking everything in. I've been watching your videos, and I've been in the Word just constantly, constantly. Sometimes I forget to eat because I'm in the Word so much. Um, and I've always been that way. I've always been very proactive and very inquisitive about different things. Uh, even even before I started keeping Sabbath, I, I was questioning holidays like Christmas and Easter and just different things like that. So um, it's, it's hard because my stepfather knows about Sabbath. He, like I had a conversation with him today about being Hebrew Israelite and what it means, you know, he he knows these things. But my mom is just completely, he can never have this type of conversation with her. Like, she is just completely away from anything that's outside of the church that, that she grew up in. Okay, and, and uh, a couple of days ago, I was watching one of your older videos about uh, the the value of gold and silver, and I was telling her, I was like, Mom, you know, you need to consider selling some of your uh, silver and gold because, we, I mean, she has a lot of it, and we could probably use it, you know, for something more important. And she's like, no, I'm not going to sell it because they're gifts from people, and, you know, why, why would I do that? But it's just I, I wasn't upset at her because I, I understood it that that that's what her reaction would be. But um, at the same time, it just kind of made me sad because I'm like, well, if she's not even considering that, then she's not even going to get past the much bigger picture of what's going to come. So I have this stepfather who knows truth, but is still kind of wishy-washy. And then I have the mom who is not at all trying to hear any of it. So I'm I'm and I'm I'm I said I'm young but I'm I'm 23 and I graduated college. I'm in graduate school right now and I'm in that weird place of yeah you're a woman but you still live in my house. So that's how it's going to happen. <laughs> that you know um but yeah that's what 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 do I do with that pastor? <laughs> oh, what- 
mean, what what did you go to school for? What did, what did you uh, major in? I majored in it at the school they call it government, but it's uh it was it's political science. Boy, that's my that's, my, my daughter. She she's an English major and um. And she also majored in political science, but I don't know what in the world y'all going to do with those degrees in this type of environment. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly why I'm in grad school, which, by the way, I'm trying to figure out if this is where I should be because this is a whole lot of money that I have to already pay from undergrad, so I have all this extra money that's now being added on to that bill. So I'm like, is it even worth it for me to be in grad school if there are not going to be any jobs available anyway? I, I tell you what, um, if you can, what, what are you try? Are you trying to get a job? Uh, because I know, are you trying to get a job so where you maybe can do some teaching or something like that? I I wouldn't mind that. I mean, I'm looking anywhere right now. I'm looking, I'm looking everywhere and anywhere for a job. I have, I I'm not limited to any type of work, any type of service. Whatever you got for me, I'm ready. <laughs> oh boy, believe me, I understand, sister, because I have a daughter in the same situation, and and I, you know, I warned her about this time, whereas I warned is everybody, not only my daughter, but everybody, and I feel you. I really, truly, truly do understand. Uh, I, I would think that if you're in undergraduate school, that, that if you could try to get some type of certification to where you can teach, um, I would do that because uh, they're going to start canning. A lot of these teachers that's been on the workforce of 15, 20, 25, and 30, 35, 40 years, they're getting rid of it because they're not going to pay these teachers all that money since we are a nation that's in debt and, and we're bankrupt. And they were there, they were able to pay somebody that's starting off new less to do the same job than to pay somebody um, uh, that, that, you know, has been there a long time and making a lot of money. So, those jobs, just like they've been cutting the police force and the fire department, those, those cuts for those jobs are right around the corner, too. And the reason why I say um, teaching, because at least if things still stay afloat for a little while, at least you'll be able to have your summers off. But I tell you what, you know, in this economy, in this environment, they're not, they don't have any debt forgiveness whatsoever at all for college debt. You will have to pay that. Um, and and that's just that's just all it is to it. They would they they won't even let anybody declare bankruptcy for college debt. Right, and I I mean I I realize that, and it's just it's making my decision a little bit easier to not be in graduate school right now because I just the only reason why I applied to this particular um, program is because it, it was a two year master program, and I'm like okay I can get in and get out, and then you know leave my house. But now I um a part one one part of the program that I that I really favored was uh the study abroad portion. And I'll I'll be finding out soon if I got um if I'm able to go abroad. But I, I'm I thought about it and I said, Well wait a minute, I don't wanna get those vaccines that I might need to go abroad because I've been abroad before but I was younger and I didn't have a choice of whether I wanted to be vaccinated. But now that I have that choice, I don't want to be vaccinated. So they might not even let me go. So I'll tell you one thing. If you get out here in this system, anytime you go into another country, another country, they probably, they're not even going to let you in that country unless you receive um, what you, even their vaccines. And that's just all there's to it. Um, um, I, I mean, if you're thinking about going abroad, um, uh, my advice would 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 always to tell people to go to China and learn how to speak Mandarin and learn how to cope in those society because they are the ones that's going to actually be ruling this next um, world order scene right now. But you know, there's so much going on, so it's hard to call it right now. This is if things go that way. Um, but but I don't blame you. I wouldn't want to get shot up with no snake venom, monkey pus, and rat poison myself either. <laughs> uh, exactly. And these people off the chain, no telling what they put into people nowadays. And they killing folks. They literally are killing folks nowadays. Um, but hey, um, I would look around, look around the country if you ain't got to stay home. You know, um, uh, uh, get a hold to the Saints down there in Houston. They say that the uh, things are booming down there. Uh, Brother Greg and Brother Mitchell does, and get on the phone, get on the horn with them, call down the hall, see if we can get the brother. 
Greg Brother Mitchell's number. Uh, you could talk with Sister Rachel, Sister Catherine, and him, see if there's anything there. I mean, I can tell that you want to get out from under Mom and Daddy's house. I sure do. I mean, and I, I am. I have been talking to them about about the truth. So that's not going to stop. But I do need to be on my own so that I can, you know, they they still eat unclean. It's just a lot of things that I want to get away from. Um, But, I I mean, I'll go anywhere. I'll go to Texas, South Carolina, anywhere. So I have have no problem with that. But with, I mean. I'll tell you what. All y'all people out there, all y'all saints that out there listening, y'all hear this, sister. Um, uh, if y'all y'all know she's from New York, if y'all know New York uh, City, <laughs> so what what kind of what kind of areas could you be looking for in your major? I mean, I know political science. I mean, you're looking at um, my God, politics, my Jesus. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, my well, I'm I'm more focused on um, women and uh, development. That's in in Africa. That's that's my main. Uh, passion, not not so much American politics. I I already know where this is going, but um, yeah, women in politics in Africa. That that's that's my main uh, focus. But I don't I don't even know what I would do with that. I mean, I, I've been looking for other things that I could possibly get into. I I'm a pro advocate for natural birth. I was looking at doula training programs. I mean, I don't know. I don't know, maybe I could be a certified doula, but then they don't get uh, enough income to live off of, so I don't know. Sister, if I could find me a job somewhere, um, you know, making, I wouldn't even say a decent wage, if you can even find a job nowadays, to tell you the truth. Um, man, I try to do something. I try to find me some faithful uh, people. I try to, you know, on this board, are you in the chat room here? Um, I don't have a, uh, an account, but I'm reading everyone's comments. Oh, but sister, you need to get an account so you can communicate with some of these faithful Israelites in here because, I mean, my, my daughter's got writing skills, unbelievable. Um, and, and I, you know, I would find, you would think that with your degree and degrees like that, uh, English literature, political science, that you're able to be able to find some type of job writing, uh, maybe even writing at home. I mean, you. I just don't know, sister. I, in that areas, I am just not familiar with whatsoever at all. I wish I knew. Well, um, I, I I'm definitely going to create an account, and I'll be talking to some of some of the family. Um, and if anybody knows anything, I mean, when I tell you, family and Pastor Dow, I've been looking everywhere for a job. I've been the. I mean the. The occupations that I've been searching are just endless, and I, it, it's, it, you really have to have faith. That's 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 all I can say. You have to have faith, and it's, New York City is just Satan's playground. That's what I can call it, and it's it's hard, but um, yeah, just just keep me in prayer. I'm gonna make an account, and I will keep in touch and let you know what happened. Uh, By all means, sister, you make sure you you uh, keep in touch with the family so we'll know what's going on with you, all right? Yep, definitely, definitely, Pastor. So, and get okay, in, well. Communicate with the saints in there because, I, um, I mean, they'll try to do whatever they can to help you. Who knows wherever it is? You know, never know where you may end up in the United States. I understand about being around because you in a house with a bunch of heathens, and here they are. It's amazing. They set up eating all this swine and stuff and can't see it and just love it. Boy, oh, help us, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. And and, and it, they, the the uh, excuses, what about that one part in the New Testament that says you can eat all foods? And I just, I'm like, you're reading it out of context, but that's right. that's okay. That's okay. Well, they enjoy the swine, let them eat it. Mm-hmm, and the shrimp and the, the crab and all of that, all of it. Unbelievable. Oh. Mm-hmm, it is. It is. But, right. I mean, I know that, yes, I know that the Most High Yah has plans for me, so. Oh, yeah. 
Sister Maris, it's good hearing from you, Sister. You make sure you stay in touch with the Israelites, okay? I sure will. Thank you, Pastor Dow, and Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Oh, man, do I understand that. I mean, man, I tell you, what, what in the world? You know, as a pastor, you know, sometimes you wish you could be wrong about some of the forecasts and some of the things that you try to tell the people what's getting ready to take place, what's getting ready to happen. But at the same time, you know you're not wrong, and you have to. You have to, and you must get the message out to all those who have the ears to hear. Look how many of your lives done changed for the better. And as you're watching our society crumble right before our very eyes, check it out. Look, look, look what's going on. Look in the world what's going on. You've got insight. Now you have foresight, and you're you're developing and and now you know exactly what you need to be doing. You're not lost like these people out here. You're not going to be um, in 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 a rock in a hard place when things don't work out with the rest of this world because you are informed. Um, you're hearing from a man of the Most High Yahweh, and with that you get direction, you get clarity, and the Most High knows them that are His. And when you're able to hear his men, you know, he said, I'm going to give you pastors according to his heart. And those pastors are going to feed you with knowledge and understanding. You go ahead and get fed and you start making your preparations and stuff and you watch all the rest of the foolish people buy you Paris. But you start making your way. Start making a way and start doing what you need to do. Um, and remember, obedience is better than sacrifice. I mean, I tell you what Brother Caprice called in, man, he Man, you don't mean to tell me that that just did not resonate. I heard what his wife said, Sister Lita. I heard what she said. She said, man, I thank y'all for the time you came across Pastor Dow. I got a candle uh, sent to me by the Theory 333. He sent me a whole box of them. And they are little small candles. You can't see it because we cut the video feed. But they're little small candles. And these are, are candles would burn twice to three times as long as as candles that you would buy in the store. I tell you, unbelievable. Well, yeah, candles are okay. If you can start a fire, start a light, just make sure they ain't got no occultic stuff on them. Hallelujah. Um, I'm glad that y'all Israelites are informed. I'm glad that y'all are ready. I'm glad. I really, truly am, and, and continue to keep listening. Those of you that have been able to, to attend GOTS, you are well ahead of the power curve. Can you believe that? 176-something people to 200 people in that town, and he could count on one hand of the people who was actually prepared for this. And you know what's going to happen? You know what's going to happen? The rest of them people think that you, you store up your stuff so that they can come and take it from you. Boy, it's going to be a crossfire from hell in this country. It really, truly is. All right, all right. Let's go to Florida, Sister Sharon. Sister Sharon. Hey, 904. Come on, my sister. How you doing? I'm, I'm doing great. I'm doing great, Pastor Al Shabbat Shalom. To all the sisters and brothers out there, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All right, all right. Uh, Pastor Dow, I just... I. Uh, Few things on my mind. I just want to say, and I'm gonna get off. There's a lot of people waiting, but I just, I just was reflecting on how much my life has changed within a year. Cause last year, I was preparing for a Halloween party, <laughs> and it's true. And this year, I look at how my life has changed and how happy I am. I'm glad I'm done with all that foolishness. I'm free from it, uh, but. It dawned on me, it's been a whole year, and within one year, God has completely changed me as a person. There is, I'll, if somebody told me, Sharon, you're going to be doing this in a year, no way, no how, I would have, no way. But I'm a better person, and I'm, I love it. So I just wanted to say that because it's kind of funny to me. I just couldn't believe where I was last year, and look at me now. Look what I'm doing now. It's just, I love it. But uh, I want to to uh, 
uh, Brother Capri. I'm glad he called tonight because that is a, uh, that's an important message, and I was like, you know what? I need to get me some candles. I need to get some flashlights. I need to do that, even though I'm doing everything else, but that wasn't a that wasn't something I put on on my list as a priority right away. But I see I need to do that because that is important. That is important. I do have some candles, and I did buy some, but I need to stock up on that. So I'm I'm thankful that he he called with that message. That was great. That was great. Yeah, and I, I bought some more silver today. Yay! I bought some more silver today. Oh, thank you for your support too, sister. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I love it. I love, I love this family. I love it. Thank God for it. I don't know what I would do if I did not have straight weight in my life right now. I, I am, I depend on it. I love it. I look forward to it. So I tell everyone about it. <laughs> I print out your newsletters, and if someone even asks me a question, I'm handing it to them. There you go. You don't take the opportunity, you know. It yep. might not come again. Well, here we go. Yep. Got an extra copy, right? So that's what I. And um and and also, um, I I realized what was this about Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday that because of where I work, people are starting to ask me, you know, why are you covering your head or. Or um, one young lady asked me, uh, you know, about a birthday. I said, I don't celebrate birthdays. And she said, why? And I thought, I thought, you know what, when you become an Israelite, uh, people will ask you questions, and, and, and it's those answers that you give them. That's your way of waking them up and bringing them into the knowledge. And so that's your, that's, you, you become a, a, a soldier. Yep, you're right. So I said, you know what? I gotta be. I gotta, you know, I gotta make sure that I'm together and I'm straight, because when someone comes and asks me a question, they're seriously wanting to know, and this is the, this is it, that moment right there. I need to make sure I know what I'm talking about. I need, I need to make sure I'm walking right and living my life right, because um, they're starting to come to me and ask these questions. And I guess they saw that, you know, she's, this is not just a little fast. She's been doing this for a minute. So now they're starting to come to me, and, and uh, I think that's pretty that's pretty powerful. That's pretty great. So, you know. It feels, I tell you what, uh, Elder, that, that newsletter that Elder Doug did on birthdays, that's enough to give anybody oh, yeah. information. Oh, yeah. I, I, that's, that's why. I haven't printed that one out yet, but I, I – uh, Went over that one, and that came just in time because I um I had an incident already with that, and uh, person got mad at me, told me, "Well, I'm gonna celebrate my birthday anyway." I didn't say a word. Tell I figured fun. you, I didn't say a word. Yeah, tell them to have fun. Yeah, but I think it was more like um, they they knew what they were doing was wrong. Because I said, well, I can't find anything in the Bible that says I need to celebrate my birthday, so therefore I'm not going to do it. And they said, well, I'm going to do it anyway. And I'm thinking, oh, well, uh, you know you're saying In my mind, I'm thinking you're saying that because you know it is true. You know it's true. So it, it's, it's, it's working on her. Cause this is a Christian sister that I work with, so she she's, she's watching me. I can I know she's watching me. So, um, you know, that's all right. But, right. Uh, and I just have one question, Pastor. Maybe you can talk about it and help me out with this. And I, I kind of mentioned this before, but I live in an apartment in a neighborhood which I'm not, this is not the place that I need to be um, as uh, as uh, things start, you know, going on and, and changing in our world. This is just not where I, I need to be. And I have an opportunity to um, to uh, get a house or purchase some land, um, but I don't want to create too much debt. And I was wondering what you would advise me to do. Well, it depends on um, are you planning on staying in Florida or, or what are you planning on doing? Well, because I have, um, I have a job here, um, Florida is okay. It's okay. The state that I live in, 
people who live here, uh, they really don't like it because uh, it's such a, 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 a racist state, they call it. So I'm not sure. I'm not, I, I like it here. I like it here. I don't have, I've never had that issue with me because I'm from up north, so I really don't pay attention to those kind of things. I just, but they have been here long enough and gone through the changes of living in the city, so they see it a totally different way. But, well, um, you know, I, I need to stay where I'm currently earning money. Right, right. Well, I, I would be right now at the position that you're in. I would try to, to stack still. I would try to store a little bit of money if I can, but main thing, get food. Food. Yeah. Food. Yeah, I'm doing that. Oh, yeah, yeah I'm doing that. Yeah, get that ready first. Doing that. Yeah, get that ready first, okay? Get my food. Okay, get all that ready. I'm doing that. I'm, I'm even buying food. I think you mentioned that I'm buying food that I would think I could barter, you know? Right. Buying food that, yeah, I'm doing that too. I think you mentioned that. And, uh, I got some 90%, um, 90, what is it, 90% uh, uh, silver dollars. I yeah. found some of those at a pawn shop today. I was like, wow, okay. So I bought some of those and so I'm doing those things. I am I'm stacking up on food. One thing I just have not mastered and I need to get this in my brain, maybe I need to put it in my car, is do not take the key out this ignition and go into that house unless you have some food. So I'm, that's the only thing I have to get used to program myself to doing. Well, get you some peanut butter and some lentils. Make sure you buy peanut butter, okay? Oh, I got peanut butter. Yeah, peanut butter. <laughs> that's, that's how I listen to every word you say. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. <laughs> All right, my sister. It's good talking with you, Sister Sharon. Yes, sir. Shabbat Shalom. Love y'all all. all. Shabbat Shalom. Man, I tell you, you cannot beat these Israelites, these faithful, loving, kind Israelites. It's just a beautiful thing. Let me see. We'll go to Sister Laura in Nevada, and then we'll hit Sister Mary Beth in Tennessee. Sister Laura in Nevada, caller number 702. This is Pastor Dow. You know, Straightway Truth. How may I help you, sister? Uh, hello, Pastor. I hope you're doing well. Um, I want to thank you for always being on the front lines, warning us uh, how to prepare for things to come, both uh, naturally and spiritually. Me and my husband are always uh, very blessed every time we listen to you and take action. Um, I'm just calling tonight because I have a question that has to do with honoring um, your mother and father. Um, my dad and I have uh, never really been close, but um, since uh, I, ha- I haven't been living with him, we've started to text each other, and maybe we're closer now than we ever were before. But um, he was homeless for quite a number of years, And um, just last year, um, I was able to start planting some seeds with him since I started to come into the faith myself. And it seemed like he was really interested, and he started praying and reading the Bible and going to church. Um, Even though it was a Sunday church, it was, I guess it was better than nothing. And he, I guess... um, I was able to see some of the fruit in his life. Even though he was homeless for years, he got a job. He got his own apartment. Um, He had my grandma move in. And then as soon as he got all those things, it seemed like he just wasn't interested anymore. And I would still try and talk with him about, about Jesus, but he just wasn't that interested. And... So I kind of let things go, and I stopped talking with him uh, about Yah. And I had a feeling this would happen, but recently he got fired from his job, and it looks like um, he and my grandmother are about to get evicted from their apartment in Las Vegas. I'm on the other side of the country. And, 
you know, I don't I don't like the idea of him being homeless or my grandmother being homeless and I'm but I also I know I I couldn't afford to, you know, pay for the things that me and my husband need and also that they need across the country. But I was I was thinking like maybe I should pay pay their rent for one month and see if he is able to secure another job. I'm just not really sure how how far um, honoring uh, honoring him would go. I I how far do you think I should go with it? Well, the Bible teaches that um, the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for laying up for the children. And of course, I understand we have a different environment and situation that we're living in, and honoring is just respecting them for who they are. So, but, um, you know, I, do you have any other family members um, that you could call on that could also assist in trying to help them but not making them dependent totally upon y'all? Because now that you are married and you have a husband, you are under the authority of your husband and not your father any longer. Am I making any sense? Yeah. Well, I I think with my grandmother, um, my aunt usually takes her in on, on and off throughout the years. But with my dad, I don't. I think a lot of the family is is done helping him. I mean, he what he's he's done sounds like he's done burned a lot of bridges, huh? Yeah. Well, you know that's just a, a terrible thing that usually happens. Um, you know, I, I, again, you are under the authority of your husband. You cannot go past the authority of your husband in any decisions that he makes for that household. If you and your husband can come to an agreement that y'all going to do this to assist your father, it's going to be this one-time thing, then so be it. But you have to understand that you are under the authority of your husband. I know you're concerned about your father or whatever may have it, but the bottom line is, as a, a daughter of Zion, an Israelite, you are under the authority of your husband, and um, you have to obey what your husband says. Okay. Um, yeah. And I, I don't know. I just see you know, some of the things that are coming down the line as far as economically. And it, it would not, not surprise me if both of my parents ended up homeless in the future. So this might, I guess th- this answer will will help me um, in the future as well. So, all right. So basically honoring them just means uh treating them kindly and, and decently and respecting them as you would any other person? Yes, um, without because, but, you know, you do. If you have a way that you can make for them, that's fine. But, see, you have to understand that if your father has lived a life to where he has been immoral, he has burned bridges, caused offenses and stuff, there's a reason why these other people don't want him around in their house. And the last thing you want to do is jeopardize your relationship with your husband since you are under his authority. I don't know what kind of man it is, but it does he doesn't sound like that he's too good of a quality of a man. Yeah. There's definitely a definitely a reason uh why they won't take him in. But um okay, that's all I wanted uh wanted to call in about and um well, I hope you have a good Shabbat, and thanks for answering my question. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Shabbat Shalom, Sister Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, people I know, I really truly do, I know that these times are difficult, and these are very difficult questions um, to, for people to answer, but you have to understand um, that when you're in a situation like that, I have to go back, and I'm going to do it anyway and give you a hard biblical answer, Um, um, and that's just the way that it is. Uh, It doesn't sound like that this man uh, is thinking about the father. It doesn't sound like he's been a very good judgment of character, Um, and that's why, do y'all see the reason why 
that I've told y'all, if I said it once, I said it a thousand times, is that you don't live a life to where you're burning bridges. You need to be living this time in this life to where you can do everything you can to where you're building healthy relationships. We got enough people out there that are offending people, that are defiling stuff and tearing up stuff, and you need to be building quality relationships because you never know. You never, ever know when you may need someone. And and we need to stop walking around with all this arrogance and this spirit and this aura and stuff like that. Now, I understand that wicked people are going to be wicked because that's just the way that they are. They're wired that way, and ain't nothing you're going to do about it. But let me tell you all something. You want to make sure you're building relationships. You don't want to be tearing down relationships if all possible. Sometimes it's just impossible to get along with people. Some people will not allow you to get along with them, and I understand that very, very well. And if hey, then you need to have enough discernment to judge good and evil to remove people out of your life and away from your life who does not mean you any good. Is that making sense? Can I get an amen in the room? Hallelujah. Glory to the king. All right. Let's go, Sister Mary Beth. Mary Beth in Tennessee. How you doing, Sister Mary? I'm wonderful. Um, you can call me Sister Mary if you want to, but my name's Melissa. You just, you just keep calling me Mary, but I don't care. You call me whatever you want to. <laughs> what happens is uh, he types in the number, and then he types in these names, and I just go by the names that he has in that's here. That's fine. That's fine. I did. I just thought it was funny, but you can call me Mary if you want to. It don't matter. Um, I got some good news today. What? Something awesome happened. What you got? I was at uh, Kroger's getting more supplies. I go every time I get an ex- extra money. And um, I passed this lady going down the aisle. And she had on head covering and a skirt. And I thought, she reminds me of, Israel, uh, of a Hebrew Israelite. So I went on around, and, I, and that's not a, let me make a statement, that that's not a big deal here because we got people from everywhere. I mean, there was people that plumb spooked me at Kroger today. They was in all black, and all you could see was their eyeballs. I don't know what they were trying to be. I don't know who they, what kind of people them are. But um, it's not uncommon to see people like that around here. We're a you know, mixed multitude because we got to college and, and stuff. But anyway... Uh, I didn't say anything to that lady, and I went on around, and she passed me again. And I just had to stop her, and I said, excuse me, are you a Hebrew Israelite? And she looked at me, and she said, yes, how did you know? And I said, well, I just reckon we we know each other. I don't know. And uh, we stood there and talked to y'all, but they heard her husband moved here because they had done some research when they found out they were Israelites. And um, uh, they lived here because when they were doing research, they found out about the Cherokee Indians writing in Hebrew and that they were probably original Hebrews and the word Tennessee means gathering place. So they just thought it would be a good place to come and uh, set up camp, I guess. I don't know. Um, But I got her number. She said they meet once a month here. Now, I'm going to go check them out. I don't know if... um, I don't know if they're all that and great, but according to talking to her, I got a good job. I said everything that she was saying sounded on the up and up. And uh, that I'm going to go check them out because I've never heard of you. And um, I'm going to introduce them when I go, go speak to her or whatever. But it was just surreal how we can pick each other out of a crowd. Yep. You know, it's just so spiritual. I mean, we both stood there and cried and was hugging each other, and she's, you know, it was just awesome. But I wanted to share that um, because it was just so moving. Well, tell her about the ministry. Oh, I'm going to. I'm going to introduce her to y'all once I go over there and, you know, get to know them a little better. I got her number, and I'm going to meet with them, and then I want to show them. Well, I told her to start listening to you, that she would just love you, love you. And um, if that is if she's a true 
Hebrew Israelite, but like I said, just talking to her, it sounded like they were. I mean, she just she knew everything, you know. Uh, well, just just keep us posted. Oh, I will, yes, sir. But I just wanted to share that, and uh, y'all have a wonderful uh, Sabbath, and God bless you. All right, Shabbat Shalom, Sister Melissa. Bye bye. Bye bye. Huh? That's good, isn't it, man? That's beautiful. Yeah, we are peculiar people, and we know each other when we see them. Hallelujah. Sister Kathy, North Carolina, 910. Come on, Sister Kathy, what you got? Hello? I'm going to have to let Sister Kathy go for right now, and we'll go to the next call, then we'll come back and see. It could be Sister Kathy or it could be Brother Stan. Uh, we'll see which one it is. We'll come back to you. Call number 760. 760, this is Pastor Dog. I'm going to straight with you through your broadcast. I'm in California. How may I help you? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dua. How you doing? Uh, Shabbat Shalom. Doing well. How may I help you? Uh, calling from 29 Palms, California. I just have, like, a couple questions I need to ask you. Go ahead. Uh, I'm in the military, USMC, probably about, you know, 10 years going on, and I'm trying to see if, uh, you know, I'm trying to make some move, basically, because I got out in 2014, and I'm trying to see if I can, uh, you know, purchase some land in your area. I just need some help on that. Well, um, if you're getting out and you're planning on purchasing some land, in there, I mean, there's plenty of land to buy, especially in small quantities and stuff. You know, it just depends on what the price it is you're looking for, what you want to pay, but... Um, uh, are you getting out on some type of uh, medical discharge or leave or something like that? No, I'm not getting out of medical discharge. I was planning on getting out because I don't plan on staying in the, the military, period, you know, trying to get out of this government system, basically. Yeah, I tell you, brother, um, if you, um, um, you may want to make sure you can lock down a job pretty good, uh, the way you can keep the commandments in it because it's getting scarce out here. Um, but I believe the most I can help you, but... You may, may want to take a good, close look at, at what you're looking at and where you're going to make sure, because up here in this area where I'm at, there is zero zilch nada when it comes to jobs. Oh, okay. I was planning on doing, like, some homestead and maybe just live off the land, basically, you know? I understand. Uh -huh. believe, believe you me, I understand. Save all the money. Sure stuff and do some due diligence in it. and maybe you can build a good strong relationship with some Israelites who are already trying to get a community together. We're here in uh in California? No, I ain't no who knows where it could be at. Oh, okay. Well I was just planning on looking in your area, uh, you know, to see what's available, meaning like land or you know, maybe, you know, a house or some small you know, settlement. I mean, what what are you? Are you a, a sergeant or staff sergeant? Uh, I'm a staff sergeant. I'm, I email you a couple times. We talk back and forth. And I know you're busy. You probably didn't, you know, email me back like on certain emails. Oh, brother, even if I if I even got a chance to look at them, I know that I was a staff sergeant when I got out, um, and I had about ten years in, brother. And uh, most high called me out and. Um, and I went ahead and made that move, brother. I, don't let me now. Don't, don't, I'm not trying to cast any doubt or something, but I want to make sure, um, you know, I can give you wisdom, try to save a lot of steps. Uh, make sure, make sure, brother, you you got your ducks in order and stuff because, and, and, and if you're planning on moving close to here, which would be found, you know, with us, but, but don't be looking for, for no, no um, high paying jobs or no skilled jobs in this area. That's all fine with me, Pastor. Hallelujah. Are you married? Okay, thanks. Thanks for your help, though. Are you married? Oh, no, I'm not married. Oh, you single man. Yeah, I'm a single man. Oh, man, that, see, that, that makes it even easier. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any, basically, I mean, I do have a, a child living in North Carolina, but basically right now I'm just a, a single man. Well, that's a blessing. That's a blessing, brother. 
Hey, yeah. Make, make sure you keep in touch, all right? Okay. Thank you. All right. Let us know what you're doing. Okay. I will. Uh, can I call, like, the, the, the house sometime? Talk yeah. to someone? I mean, um, okay. yeah, Shabbat Shalom. All right. Shabbat Shalom. All right. Let's go to Brother Roland down in Texas. Brother Roland, 972. What you got, brother? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dow. How are you this evening? Ah, uh, brother. YouTube, you know what I've been doing. Yeah, I, I see you. I see you. I've, I've caught all the videos. I'm encouraged by not just what uh, I see, but I'm actually down in Baytown right now. I'm going to go in Shabbat with uh, Brother Greg and Brother Mitch on the Saints down here in Houston area uh, tomorrow. Uh, and enjoy service. Um, I actually had a question tonight for the first time. I, I really do. I've been working with some uh, people, and someone brought a question to me that I didn't really know how to handle, no matter how I you know, tried to approach it. But it, it has to do with um, where uh, Shaul, you know, speaks of uh, being silent, you know, women position and being silent in the church. And, and their thing was, if I can't show in uh, the Torah or the prophets where it is specifically said that women aren't to teach, because I use many um, examples of you know women being prophets as being as being the same as teachers, but my understanding is a prophet and a teacher are two different things. If am I incorrect in that? Well, first of all, number one. A prophet is someone that genders to the male species, and a prophetess is someone that genders to the female species. And, yeah, I see, okay. Yeah, see, so you have to be very definitive on the term that you use. Now, when the Bible says the teacher usurp a thought of man, yeah, that's in a renewed covenant. But, brother, right. think about it. Think about it, brother. There is not one priest that is ever, you remember, um, there's not one priest, brother, that was ever a female, and females was not in charge of temple service. Matter of fact, even during the feast, brother, it says that right. all males shall appear before the Most High Yah. And so, you know, right. what you're dealing with, you're dealing with people who are just straight up rebellious. And, and you don't want to fool with people like that too much, brother, because it's a sad, sad thing when women don't know their place and men don't know their place today in this clear cut word. Well, well I, at the end, I didn't pursue. I ended up being deleted as, you know, and this is someone that I, you know, have known for many years um, in, I guess, Hebrew, but not, you know, truth, and not, not straightway truth, like, but, and just the way, it, it was more of a contentious, you know, the question was contentious in its giving, and that's why I was asking about, and I should have said prophetess, because that, that's what she was pulling out were examples of prophetess. And everyone that she brought, you know, I showed, well, this doesn't have anything to do with, because I thought, to me, the, the strongest terms in what Shaul said was suffer. It wasn't that they were teaching, but suffered to teach, as well as um, for, for the other one, what, what is it? Uh, oh, I should have had it open for us. But it, it, the key words are the action words prior to the delegation of the service. And... To me, a prophetess is not a teacher. So I pointed out there's no priest no or priestess. There was never a priestess of Yah. But if you could show me that, then I could agree with what you're trying to say. But but thank you, guys. I, I, I realized that, that what I was getting at, because to me, I came up to it through, I guess, logic rather than actually having, you know, scripture to support it, because I didn't know if there was a priestess anywhere. Like, I can, I can see these prophetess, but I don't see that as being a teacher, so... I kind of wanted to throw it out completely anyway. So, All right, bro, Roland. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Pastor. Thank you. You have a great uh, uh, Sabbath. Amen. Let me tell you women something out there. You need to sit down and shut up. That's what you need to learn how to do. You need to be a woman of a meek and quiet spirit, and you need to learn that when you start trying to get into a position, a place where it's the authority of a man, you are way out of order, and you're inviting yourself wide open for demonic spirits. Now, a woman is the first-line teacher of children, and she should, and she should. That's what she should do. 
she should be teaching the children. When you get old enough to become a mother, then you can teach the younger women to love their husbands. There go your teaching right there, biblically, straight from the Bible, the way that it ought to be done. And you should be centered on Proverbs 31 of becoming a virtuous woman rather than trying to usurp authority over man. Can't you see that's the reason why the world's so jacked up today? It's because the system is going to strip the man of everything that he all is. Every man, we already got a hard enough time trying to keep T levels, testosterone levels up high, besides coming home and being castrated by a woman preacher. My God, what an abomination, man. What an abomination, a woman pastor. Where in the hell do y'all get that mess from? Oh, boy, I know it come right out of Christianity, right? Boy, it's a good thing that y'all pulled y'all out of that mess. Ah, hallelujah. All right, Sister Kathy or Brother Stan, North Carolina. Call number 910. Let's try it again. Are y'all there? Shabbat Shalom, Pastor Dow. Hey, Brother Stan. Are you there? How you doing, Elder? We're doing well. Just just want to check in with you and you and the saints and everything. I know y'all been busy and, you know, just want to let you know we're praying for you because you know you are Everyone needs restoration, and, um, you know, just want to thank you once again for, you know, just for everything that you're doing, just encouraging the saints, encouraging us. Um, you know, you've really been a blessing to the uh, um, to the saints. i tell you what, brother, was that not a very encouraging phone call that Brother Caprice called in? Yes, it was. It was. I mean, just... You know, just like here in North Carolina, we're getting ready for this uh, hurricane and everything, and, you know, if it hits, you know, and, and just being ready. And just and I know we aren't even worried about it, you know. So it, when it comes, we're just going to deal with it when it comes. But, you know, we ain't worrying about power, how we're going to eat and all that stuff. We, you know, we're ready to go. Just go out there on the backyard. If it comes your way, just rebuke it and tell it to go the other way, brother. You'll be all right. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's all. That's all I want. Didn't really want anything. Just want. Just want to check in with you. I haven't talked with you in a while, and, and uh, I know you've been busy, so that's why I haven't called you anything. So um, I know you got a lot on your plate. But I just want to say Shabbat Shalom and bless everyone. Good hearing from. So I have to say hello. All right. Good hearing from y'all. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Well, we've had a pretty decent broadcast here. Um, can y'all in the room let me know how the radio broadcast? has been coming on since I've cut the video feed on a scale of 1 to 10, with 10 being the best and 1 being the worst. Worst. Let me know how it's done come in in y'all area down there because, you know, it's more important to hear. Faith come by hearing, and hearing come by the word of y'all. I'm sure that y'all don't mind looking at my ugly mug, and y'all want to continue to keep looking at me. Now, I understand all that and stuff and watching these crazy expressions I have on my face, but it is. It's better to hear. It is more better blessed to hear. We need to hear, all right? Hallelujah. I am exci- I'm excited, I'm elated, and I am blessed by each and every last one of you Israelites that have come on board. Hallelujah. I really, really, truly am. And I'm glad that you are walking in the faith and you're keeping the faith. Hey, let me tell you all something. We're going to be back in spiritual warfare tomorrow during Shabbat service, so y'all get ready, okay? I want y'all to get y'all spirits ready. Um, because I'm going to say some things that's going to get deep down to the heart of the matter and the soul of the matter, but notice, and I want you to reflect on this, every bit of it is all for your perfection. Hallelujah. All for your perfection. All right? We're going to be getting busy. We're going to be dealing with spirits. If you notice all these other ministries out here and stuff, they may deal with it in part, but if you notice a lot of these so-called messianic movement, Hebrew Israelite movement, why did all of them, seem to adopt a hands-off attitude when it comes to dealing with spirits. I'll tell you the reason why. They ain't got no power. And if you ain't got no power, you can't be going over there messing around, casting out no devils, because uh, the devils get over there and they'll mock you. Huh? That's what they'll do. They'll mock you if you ain't got no powers. That's the problem. Um, but it seems like every one of them, man, people don't mind reading books and set up and batting scriptures and arguing over each other, how you say his name and stuff. Let me tell you all something. The ancient Hebrew that Moses spoke is a dead language. Nobody knows it today. There's not one person alive on a face of planet Earth that can pronounce it. As close as we can get is this Hebrew Chaldean that when we went into Babylonian captivity and came out of the Hebrew Chaldean and stuff, even at that, we still are pulling at straws trying to even get it pronounced right. So basically what it is is whatever people pick and choose 
to speak it, whatever this, the way they say it. But what good is it to speak all these different names and you still don't have no power of the Holy Spirit? Huh? Waste of time, isn't it? Ain't it a flat waste of time? Well, one of the first newsletters I did this year had to do with the name. And I don't see too many people taking me on the chin for that. Huh? I don't see too many people offering me an open discussion and debate on that. Huh? I don't see it. Oh, boy. Well, I guess it's just going to, hey, it's just part of it, isn't it? But I do know that the Messiah said, as well as the apostle says, by their fruit, you shall know them. Did y'all hear that? By their fruit, you shall know them. So everybody worried about how you pronounce something. Ain't nobody looking at fruit today. What a mess. What a mess. You're talking about just a literal mess that we're in today. What a mess that we're in. People become so cardinal, they're no spiritually good. I tell you, it's just a mess. Well, anyway, thank y'all that, that we got clarification and that we're growing in truth. Remember, I'll be in um, um, Georgia, be the Father's will, and I believe it's his will. November the 3rd, I'll be in Georgia. November the 3rd, look forward to seeing you, you, and you there. Uh, Brother Steve up in Canada. Um, how is the... Um, uh, my, my little chart thing coming. Is it coming pretty good? I'm not rushing or nothing. I just want to know if it's coming on pretty good. Hallelujah. Glory to the King. Well, hey, y'all be encouraged, Israel. I am going to go, and I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to lay down. I am going to rest on this beautiful Sabbath day. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Man, we got a lot of guests. All y'all guests are welcome. Hallelujah, every one of you. Test everything, prove everything, try everything, okay? Um, you only have one life, one soul, and there's no need in going around in this life not experiencing the joy of the most high that you can have right now if you'll just commit yourself to it. Uh, we have a nice big large family scattered all over the place. Sister Molly, thank you for your offer and I received uh, today. Thank you very much, sister. Don't put yourself in a bind now, okay? But thank you for the offer and glory to the king. Um, the brothers now, we get up first day morning, we're going to be up there on top of that building. We got 7,000 more pounds of Quick Creek we got to put in those walls. Hallelujah. Lord to the King, I'm going to get some rest. Y'all be ready tomorrow, okay? Y'all make sure y'all ready. All right? Make sure y'all are ready because we're going to be dealing with spirits now. Remember, Pastor Dow loves you. Sister Carol loves you. All the straightway does. We're here for y'all, to be an example for y'all. That's what we're here for. Hope that y'all encourage, hallelujah, and we hope that, that everybody is working hard at being good Israelites, especially in the time come. Remember, we want to build relationships, not tear them down, especially amongst us who names are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Bless you, Sister Shannon, Elder Joe Pena out there in California, hallelujah. Um, y'all be encouraged, okay? Pastor Dow is going to go, and I am going to get some rest. The king is coming. Y'all be encouraged. I love y'all dearly. Y'all pray for me, all right? Just pray for me. Pray for my strength and the most high y'all, okay? I love y'all. The king coming. Uh-oh, look at him looking.